from the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast. This is U.S. Farm Report. Welcome to U.S. Farm Report this weekend. I'm Tyne Morgan, and here's what's in store over the next 60 minutes. Planting is just getting started in some areas, but it's already a story of the East versus the West. So we've effectively sharpened up that gradient, and we'll see those delays in the Eastern Corn Belt starting to multiply. But as El Nino fades, we'll tell you what La Nina could bring. USDA's latest look at supply and demand stirred up some debate. To me, the, the biggest surprise were, um, you know, call it the lack of changes that we saw uh, from the USDA. As NASA announces, it's discontinuing a couple big reports. And the end of an era in Texas as the sugarcane industry continues to wither away. U.S. Farm Report, presented by Pioneer. What's next happens when the name on a cap matches the power of one's purpose. Pioneer, what's next happens here. Now for the news, USDA releasing a new batch of numbers this week with the latest supply and demand report with a focus on ending stocks and exports. Taking a look at the latest ending stocks numbers in the report, all three corn, soybeans, and wheat were higher than what the trade had expected. Corn at 2.1 billion bushels, that is 50 million bushels lower than last month. The agency forecasting higher corn used for ethanol, but unchanged numbers for exports. For soybeans, ending stocks were raised 25 million bushels to 340 million, that was on lower exports. And for wheat, 698 million bushels, up 25 million from last month. Again, no change to exports. Now USDA making some small changes to South American crop production numbers, lowering corn production in Argentina due to a decline in yield expectations. No change to the country's soybean crop size, and it made no changes at all to Brazil forecast for corn and soybeans. One analyst saying USDA should have made more changes to South America. We'll talk about that coming up in our marketing roundtable. Some key numbers producers need to make decisions about their crops and livestock may soon no longer be available. The National Agricultural Statistics Service, or NAS, announcing it's canceling the July cattle report, as well as all county estimates for crops and livestock starting this year. NAS blaming budget cuts from the most recent appropriations bills. It now intends to only release one cattle inventory report annually. That happens in January. However, the news is not setting well with farm groups we talked to, including the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, who told Michelle Rook this will mean more volatility for the market and make it more difficult for producers to see into the future when it comes to supplies. There are other ways that the agency can go about trying to pinch pennies and make sure that they are making those dollars stretch as far as they possibly can. But especially since this administration has touted its transparency agenda since the very beginning of the Biden administration. USDA tried to cut the July cattle inventory report in 2016 and ended up reinstating it. NCBA is calling on NAS to reverse its decision again. Keeping you updated on the avian flu and dairy cattle outbreak, new cases were confirmed this week. The latest cases involve dairy herds in North Carolina and South Dakota. USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service website saying that it was also officially detected now in two dairy farms in New Mexico. That brings the total number of states with confirmed cases to eight. Well, besides dealing with an outbreak of avian flu in dairy cattle in Texas, Texas is continuing to recover from devastating wildfires that hit the Panhandle area in late February. Texas Ag Commissioner Sid Miller says producers are still tallying up the damage, but it's estimated the fires consumed 1.3 million acres or about 2,000 square miles in the state. He says the state lost about 10,000 head of cattle and more could die over the next six months due to respiratory issues. The fires damaged or destroyed 120 miles of electrical lines, along with 500 houses, barns, and structures. There's some really long-term effects. For instance, our, our fences, once they are, go through a fire like that, they may still be up, but the T-posts have lost all their outer coating, so they're going to eventually rust. The, the barbed wire is still up, but the tensile strength is gone. As soon as winter hits and it contracts, it'll all bust, so it's, it's all got to be replaced. A lot of it's on, on the grounds. He says right now the greatest need is still for feed, hay, and fencing supplies for those ranchers. For more on how you can help, check out TexasAgriculture.gov. 
a federal program that helps pay for groceries for millions of low-income mothers, babies, and young kids will put an emphasis on eating more fruits and vegetables as well as whole grains. New rules to the WIC program were announced this week. They extend COVID-era cash vouchers for fruits and vegetables. But the rules also focus on whole grains, eliminate or reduce juice, and lower the quantities of milk. As you can imagine, the dairy industry is not happy with the decision regarding milk, saying in a combined news release that it, quote, is disturbed by the decision to reduce access to the essential nutrients dairy adds to diet, end quote. It went on to say milk, cheese, and yogurt are three of the five top redeemed items through WIC. WIC served about 6.6 .6 million people a month in 2023 at a cost of about $7 billion. A warm-up to a cool-down? We'll have a check of your forecast coming up next.